It's going to get bad in here. Okay? You guys want trash? You guys want trash? Well, you're getting trash. John Doyle took the political compass test. And I got to say, I may have skipped forward to see where that little dot landed on that little axis, okay? I might have skipped forward. And I got to say, I'm not disappointed in my uh, in my projection of where he would land, okay? He's going to go through this political compass test. We're going to go through it with him. I'm going to speed him up a little bit because it's like a 30-minute video. I'll speed him up. I'll give him like one, two, five. He's, you know, he already talks kind of fast. I got to say, I don't know if he doesn't think he's authoritarian, but Political Compass, spoilers, agrees with me, okay? So let's watch John Doyle self-own just like basically Ben Shapiro did. Same shit. You're not for liberty. You're not for freedom. You're not even for like, the things that America stands for. You're a fucking fascist. All right, John. Tell us how fascist you are. Hi, I'm John Doyle. You might know me as the YouTube man who hosts the Hack Off Commie program that so many of us enjoy, but really, I'm just a normal guy like you. I have dreams, fears. I've struck out and caused my team the big game before. Sometimes I sing in the car. And like all good people, I can be labeled and charted on arbitrary graphs which are produced by vague and loaded questions, so I hope that you'll stay tuned as we take the political compass test together. Let's get started. I mean, I will say that some of the questions on there are pretty bad if you don't click the expanded answers. Like, if you go to political compass, then you go, hey! <laughs> can, we, can we have a little bit more, a little more nuanced answer? And you pick one of those, you get better answers. Yeah, already playing the defense? Hell yeah. Oh yeah. This is arbitrary. Okay. Alright, let's see it, John. Alright, skipping that shit. If it's just because my name is in the title, this video should go right up there with them. But only time will tell. Can't say I'm too optimistic. And also because I've noticed that... You know, conservatives, we like to hold ourselves in high regard. Like, oh, these leftists get so triggered by ideas. How pathetic. But then I come out and say, hey, you know, we should probably regulate porn or something. And then I get death threats from my wonderful audience. So I well, I mean, I don't know that you should send John death threats for saying that we should, what he called, regulate porn. He wants to ban porn. He doesn't want to regulate it. Thank you, Serge, for following. He doesn't want to regulate it. He wants to, it's already regulated. 18 plus. It's on certain servers. That's, that's where it's at. You can't do it on, like, network TV. It's already regulated. There's certain things you can and cannot do. It's regulated. Depending on the state. He wants to ban it. I mean, your audience is a bunch of right-wing incels. It's, like, the one thing they got. I'm not surprised that you get a few death threats from your crazy-ass fans. I'm excited to put this out here, find out where we agree, find out where we don't, and then move forward from there. So the last time I took this test, I believe I was a sophomore in high school, and I remember that all of the questions were very vague, and many of them were predicated upon false premises. So I'll walk you through sort of how I'm interpreting all of these as we go through them. But the way it works is that it tries to graph you along two axes, one for left versus right, and one for authoritarian versus libertarian. And I'm not the biggest fan of this model, but I do understand the reasoning behind it. Uh, my prediction is that I'll be somewhere in the blue, which is where conservatives will end up if it's accurate. I highly doubt that I'll be in the purple, which is where the libertarians would be. I am a conservative, not a libertarian, but I used to be a libertarian. And obviously there's some overlap, but I'll let you. The authoritarian right. I expect I'll be in the blue. Why don't you say it? Why don't you say the word? I'll be in the authoritarian right. It's his mom's basement, I'm told. He's mommy's little Nazi. Oh, that's cute. Lance, you're not you're not you're not streaming. What a bummer. You've been doing you've been doing good shit recently. You guys be the, the arbiters of that, so we'll get to it. So the first question, if economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. This is kind of what I was talking about. I don't like the questions. I wish that they made them more explicit and specific. Like, I think that would make for a much more accurate... Why stream when I can watch Drake? Hey, why don't you bring all your viewers with you too, huh? Test, but, you know, I'm not going to be this guy <laughs> about it. Like, I'll just, I'll take the test. Um, the first thing... Economic globalization is not actually inevitable. It's often purported to be this inevitable consequence of societal evolution. It's the culmination of technological and industrial development, etc. This is just not the case when we talk about modern economic globalization. That was the direct result of the deliberate creation of certain institutions. And, <laughs> and then he hosts. I mean, that's kind of the same thing, sure. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's not what I meant. But yeah, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. <laughs> Touche, sir. Well played. Reposted. 
you got me policies with specific agendas in mind and like we can weigh the pros and cons of that at a later time but you know i guess if the premise is like if it's inevitable so okay if it's inevitable it should primarily serve the interests of humans over transnational corporations that's also tricky because corporations are just like abstract legal entities so human beings comprise corporations corporations are just people oh my fucking god he just said corporations are people he just said corporations are people okay all right. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. So I don't think these two are mutually exclusive. You know, as our friends on the left would say, it's not binary, but you know, I guess that's why they say primarily. So, so yeah, okay, primarily, I'd say that I agree with that because to primarily serve the interests of humanity is in effect to serve the interests of corporations because corporations can be extremely helpful to humanity. <laughs> <laughs> this is... It's, we're already starting off with the fucking... He can't even get something basic right. Like... Uh, should we help the people that exist or a few people, just a few people in some corporations? He believes in trickle down or some fucking form of it. God, man. This guy's brain just shuts off. I'm gonna have to hit the bong to relax the water. God damn, I should have. Yeah, me too. Shit. But to primarily serve the interests of corporations isn't necessarily to serve the interests of humanity, and people will respond to that by saying. Oh, well, corporations can only benefit through voluntary transactions in the free markets. Yeah, I know, I know, I know who Milton Friedman is. But, you know, to serve the interests of corporations is, like, in isolation. That leads to things like monopolies. I mean, those are beneficial to corporations, like, by definition. That's why you look at who lobbies for regulations to crush small businesses. You look at who tries to use antitrust laws to break up justly earned market shares. You're arguing against the thing you say you're for. It's businesses trying to serve their own interests. Like a business only has an incentive to make money. That can mean voluntary transactions where everyone's happy, or that can mean getting the population addicted to or dependent upon a product that only it sells and then, you know, jacking up the prices. Like those are both beneficial to corporations. You can't just assume that businesses always have um, the best interests of people at heart. And so what we have to do is try to... Because you just said it, businesses under capitalism have no incentive to have the best interests of people at heart. It's literally just for capital. That's it. It's the only it's the it's the only purpose. Why would you think that why would you think that that would work in any other way? That's very bizarre. Okay. Justly earned market share. Oh, of course. Have a system that facilitates their success if it benefits people. And this would mean keeping big, big businesses, excuse me, from lobbying for regulations that kill smaller competition. Basically, things like tremendous deregulation of different markets. But we also have to acknowledge the importance of not allowing certain things to be marketed. Like, you're selling homemade hair conditioner made from pumpkin seed oil uh, out of your house from an online store, which enables you to pay for your daughter's soccer season. Like, that's epic. Step aside, Uncle Sam. But you want to sell heroin in my neighborhood? You want to get my sons more interested in pornography than bike rides so you can profit off ad revenue? Yeah, I don't think so. Not in my neighborhood, so. What? So it's just it just depends on what John thinks is fine within the market to sell. That's strange. X minus T. He's for free market except not free. Like the idea of a free market, the veneer of a free market, like the the sign on front says free market, the same way the sign as you cross over to North Korea says the People's Republic of North Korea. It's the same shit. It's just. Come on. How is porn sold in Michigan online? I don't know. Did you guys go fucking buy porn? That's weird. That shit's weird. If you have porn in your house, that's strange to me. Free away the benefits of thanks, Ask Comp, you for the Twitch Prime. I'll just say that I agree. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to, to overthink everything, if we could just answer the questions? But of course, we always have to overthink, but uh, I'll try to be more expeditious. I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. Uh oh. Just. I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. True. Strongly agree. Why? What? Why? What is the point? What is the purpose of that? What is the purpose of that? What? What is it for? Uh, my country is doing something abhorrent. And I support it. Why? Let's see. Let's see why. Jesus. I'd always support my country. I love my country. And that doesn't mean I love the government of my country. The government of my country is dumb. They only know like six things. And at least four of them aren't even true. My country is you. It's my family. My, f my country is you. By the way, the last question, I chose corporations over you and my family. What? 
uh, the country is you. By the way, you don't get anything. We're giving it to corporations and the fucking government. What the fuck is wrong with this guy's brain? Forefathers, my land. This land was made for me and you. You know, we talk about... This land was not made for you and me. Or me and you. It was settled long before we got here. It was... It was... Uh, is he totally forgetting? This land... Th that's propaganda. This land was not made for me and you. This land was here and then settled by First Nations people who look a little bit different than you and I, John. Supporting something. I believe that like literally means to support it, to do your best to prevent it from collapsing. Like, if your friend wanted you to go with them to a party in a dangerous neighborhood, and you said no, you get a call from them, they're like, hey, you were right, they're playing Russian roulette with a Glock and a six-sided die, can you- That's not... What? A Glock and a six-sided die? Has he played Russian roulette like that before? That's strange. You come get me. You might want to say, I told you so, but at the end of the day, you want what's best for your friend. So you go and you pick them up and you scold them after the fact, after they're no longer in danger. So Russian roulette with a Glock and a six-sided die, meaning that you roll the dice and then if it's... That's not the point, though. I, that's a terrible... That, can we talk about that for a second? Can we talk about that for a second? If it lands on, like, a one or a six, right, is when you pull the trigger, right? But, like, the point of the Russian roulette... Is you pull the trigger not knowing. If you pull the trigger and you know that you're going to get shot because it's a Glock and it's just magazine fed, that takes away the thrill of Russian Roulette. He even fucks up suicide for me, okay? Actually, is it suicide? I don't even know. It's just really fucked up. He fucks it up for me. I can't believe he's ruined that for me. Oh, the way I interpret this is like, yes, I'll always support my country in that I will always love my country and I will always do my best to keep her on the right track, basically. So, yeah. Keep her on the right track? Okay, I don't... Okay. I do not consider... I do not consider... Hey, country! Don't cage Mexican children! I don't consider that me supporting them and putting them on the right track, okay? I don't consider that the case. Idiot. No one chooses his or her country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. He's going to strongly disagree. No one chooses his or her country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. And he's going to say something like, well, then why are gays or blacks or whatever, why are they proud of themselves if they didn't choose to be gay or black? Bank it. Strongly disagree. That's like saying, there's no reason to be proud of your parents. You didn't choose to be their child. Now, it would be weird and, like, pretty narcissistic to just be proud of your country exclusively or primarily because you were born there. But in my case, I happen to have been born in a country that, frankly, is worth being proud of more so than all other countries, I would say. But, well, of course, because you're dumb. Uh, Doyle literally wanted to keep us on the right wing track. I know, right? That doesn't mean that other people <laughs> shouldn't also be proud of their countries. I love it. I really do. Like, when people are proud of their countries, it truly brings me happiness to see, like, British people taking pride in Brexit, for example. I really like that. You know, unless your country sucks, then you probably shouldn't be proud of it, but, you know. Jesus Christ. Our race... Uh-oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. How is John gonna answer this one? Talk about Russian roulette with your audience. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. His audience is gonna want him to say strongly agree. He's gonna want to say probably agree. But then he'll be added as a racist, so he's gonna have to say, like, one of these... He's up against a rock and a hard place here, guys. I don't know. Is he going to go full mask off here? I don't know. What's the bet, chat? Type 1 in chat if you think he's racist. Type 2 in chat if you think he's going to disagree. That's what I want to know. Okay, wow. Not a lot of faith? Not a lot, not a lot of faith in our boy John here, huh? Oh, boy. A couple of you went too. And then Lance just typed Bukake. This is not, I think, I, this is not a search tab. This isn't a search chat tab, Lance. That's my chat. That's just my chat. Our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. This is interesting because they say our race, which implies that the author of this test and I are undoubtedly of the same race. And the only way to ensure... No, it's about the reader's race. Yemis, thank you for the tier or that one. would be to define race as the human race. And I do believe that the human race is superior to all other species because typically when we say... Oh my human fucking race, God, is he seriously going to... No. Of course, I'm team human every day, but no. I'm more inclined to think that this is the standard issue are you a Nazi question, which I'm not, but also, as a Christian, I disagree with the premise for we are all one in Jesus Christ. Oh my God, that was worse than the... Okay, so he went to, but he said the human race and then used Jesus to hedge his bet. <laughs> God. 
<laughs> oh no. All right. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. He's going to agree. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Disagree. Whoa, he disagreed. Let's see if why. If the enemy of your enemy were your friend, he'd explicitly be your friend. You know, oftentimes people can work together for a time. Oh, it's just semantics. Never mind. It's just, it's, he's just, he's just being cringy. Never mind. He's like, well, actually, definitionally speaking. Oh, never mind. United by their dislike for something or someone, but if that relationship was conceived by your mutual dislike for whatever that thing is, what's to stop that relationship from dissolving or becoming hostile after that thing is taken care of? Like, the foundation of a friendship is much more stable than that, but, you know, I also understand the short-term strategy behind it, so I'll just disagree. Jesus Christ. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. He's going to agree. Military action that defies care about international, international law, law is sometimes justified. True, care, yeah. strongly agree. Of course, we can always come up with a reason for something to be justified, but international law is basically fake, and I am serious. <laughs> <laughs> international law is basically he's so close he might as well just said international law is a social construct i'm just saying i'm just saying it's pretty close okay fuck you the hague seriously of the opinion that i possess more actualized brain power after a small black coffee than the entire united nations general assembly I, you know what? John has a lot of confidence in his own brain. That's nice. That's nice of him. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. There's now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. He doesn't worry about the fact that there is propaganda? Interesting. Not surprised. Interesting. Question where just there is a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. I might be inclined to just agree. But it specifies now, which isn't true. I mean, fusing information and entertainment is something that human beings have always done. Some of What? Okay. It's something human beings have always done, except not always th were there people able to fucking read that shit. Like, we're, we're literally in a scenario where the president lives in, in, in a literal other reality. Where he's just like, I don't know, everything's fake news! I might not give over my fucking throne if I lose the election. The best works of literature, for example, do exactly this. My personal favorite being Animal Farm by George Orwell. Which, of course, is a critique of Stalinist Russia, but it's about little farm animals, so it's fun. But this seems to be pretty innate to human nature. Um, I mean, also, and, 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 and class, class issues, but okay. So the solution to me would just be to get more conservatives involved. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, he doesn't understand. Or <laughs> I agree. In entertainment, so we could chip away at the left's monopoly. People are ultimate. Why do right-wingers love Orwell so much? He was a socialist. Hey, hey, whoa. How dare you? How dare you? I don't know. I don't know why. They, they do that sometimes. There's actually um, <laughs> a guy who I disagree with regularly, Vernaculus. Uh, he no longer does videos or stuff anymore. Uh, his name is Justin, and he uh, decided to start writing instead of doing YouTube videos and stuff. I uh, totally disagree with him a lot. He's a center libertarian. Um, but he has recently been going hard against the modern Republican Party. Um, I follow him on Twitter still, even though he's mad at me. Um, because he just fucking, he just fucking, he like loves Orwell and they, they misappropriate him all the time. Um, Orwell sucked that, well of course Orwell sucked, everybody sucked back then. Ultimately divided more by class than by nationality, strongly People are ultimately divided more by class than by national, and he disagrees. He disagrees. He disagrees with a fundamental tenet of capitalism. <laughs> He disagrees that there needs to be class stratifications within capitalism for it to work. I, amazing. Disagree. The 20th century basically owned that hypothesis with facts and logic, which... I... Uh, he's... Okay. It's partially what led to the left embracing racial and sexual identity politics as a political strategy. The original hypothesis basically failed. Some men tried to update the software, notably Lenin. Mao is a good example, but that failed. So, no, people are not more divided by class than by nationality. The guy is like if 4chan turned into a person. He's just so dumb. And he says so many dumb wrong things. He invoked <laughs> Lenin and Mao? And then said like, that's why... <laughs> uh, Lenin and Mao failed and then the left was like, Ah, I guess we're gonna <laughs> talk about gender. That's the next obvious step. What? <laughs> what fucking kind of... like? brain acrobatics did he just do i don't know man i think john's brain the, f to get from lenin and mao 
not working and saying that, like, their critiques of class, I guess, are bad to saying that that's why the left is, like, there's lots of transes. There's, like, a non-Euclidean fold in his brain somewhere where those synapses, like, like, met up. I don't know how that works. I don't know how brains work. It's wild. That doesn't make any sense. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. Strongly agree. The backbone of an... <laughs> he almost did the strongly disagree and I was going to be surprised. Economy is its monetary policy. Like, if you look at what's caused the recessions and depressions of the past, it can often be traced back to bad monetary policy. And the way that you would go about controlling unemployment would be to have the government create jobs through things like public works projects. Um, but the problem with that is that the sustainability of something like that is basically still dependent on the monetary policy. So that's going to end up taking precedence. But it's fake. It's just, it's how we feel about the money. Okay. Uh, because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require really strongly agree. Yeah, you know, you need to account for externalities, but this is not meant oh, to shoehorn close. Kind of like a Green New Deal, which goes way beyond that by basically any metric, so we'll just agree. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. From each according to his ability to each according to his need. Yeah, I mean, it sure sounds like a good idea. When I think of an idea being good or bad. You gotta think like, why does it even exist? And the ideas exist to solve problems. So because of that, the idea should be evaluated on how well it's actually going to solve that problem. The uh -oh. left doesn't do that. The left evaluates ideas based on wait, how- Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Who is that from? Am I nuts? It's Marx, right? That's Marx. This is Marx. Slogan popularized by Karl Marx. Is he going to agree with Karl Marx? I had to double check. I was like, you know, I don't read a lot of fucking literature here. But, like, that is, like, that's, like, the main... He, he almost gaslit me. Because I was like, surely he will know that this is Marx, right? Okay. 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 Uh oh. Good they sound like in a moral context. This it's, particular idea sounds like a good idea, meaning is he, it wait, sounds like a virtuous idea, but it doesn't actually work in practice. But it doesn't work in practice. Okay. Okay. Woo. Woo. -hoo. Oh, I thought he was going to be even more of a big piece of dumb shit. Okay. It cost us tens of millions of human lives to figure that out, but you know, that's not quite enough for them yet or so it would seem. He strongly dis disagrees. It's a sad okay. reflection on society that something is Okay. It's a sad reflection on society. Uh, something as basic as a drinking water is now bottled brand. Oh my God, is he gonna disagree? Basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product. No, it's a sad reflection on society that people can like make statements like that as if they're like very insightful. Like, wow, that's deep, man. Why are we paying for something that we can get for free? Let me just go get my funnel and my jug from my car, and we can just wait for three hours instead of going into the convenience store and paying ninety nine cents. Like, what else would it be? It's a resource. It's scarce. We need it. Like, why not sell it? You still buy your water from the government. Do you think that's what all of us should do? No, thank you. I don't want the fluoride stare. Guys, I, I just, I can't wrap my head around the type of person he is. Yeah, we should capitalize on water. Why not? Uh, John, that would leave people to be thirsty if they can't afford it. It's only 99 cents. Yeah, I know, but you're not paying people a living wage. They should pull themselves up by the bootstraps. We're out of bootstraps. We don't, we're not a manufacturing economy anymore. We don't make the bootstraps. We gotta get them from China. Well, I only buy American made. Well, we can only get bootstraps from China now. Where are you left? Where are you left, John? There's like nothing here. Okay, relax, relax. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. This oh, he's gonna disagree. It's like the same thing, as opposed to what? The government distributing it as they see fit? That is incorrect on at least a practical and yes. a philosophical level. Yeah, shut the fuck up. God. Big titty Meg. Thanks for the four, the six months. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing. Oh, God, no! <laughs> ...into society. So this question was obviously written by someone who has never 
taken a second to try to comprehend how the financial services industry works. Like, it's not just pushing numbers on a screen and, you know, watching a light up. Yay, collars! No, and even if that were the case, why is that regrettable? Like, wh why would we regret that? That seems like an odd way to put it. But, you know, that being said, there are people... If, if the case were, in fact, that they were meaningless to society and were able to hoard mounds of capital in spite of that, you don't see a problem with that? That's strange within the industry that exploit the society to benefit themselves, which is doing more than just a hypothetical not contributing to it. So, so we'll disagree. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. Strongly agree. Ugh. We're not going to let our country be taken advantage of anymore. I mean, protectionism is like 34% of what won Donald Trump the election in 2016. And both the right and the left have their own different reasons for supporting free trade. All of them are misguided. Seriously, here's something you don't hear too often. There is nothing conservative about supporting free trade. The founder of the Republican Party, Abraham Lincoln, was a protectionist. And his three pals alongside him on Mount Rushmore, Washington, Jefferson, and Roosevelt, they were all protectionists as well. Okay, this is very interesting. It's very interesting that he goes with the hard protectionism. Because he literally fetishizes in his intro post-World War II America that got ridiculously powerful by, by ending and ceasing their protectionist policy insofar as trade is concerned. Because guess what? They could exploit post-World War II Europe for cash and the rest of the world. And then they decided, whoa, wait, war is profitable. We should do that more. And then America did more war and stopped being protectionist. There's a reason we have embassies all over the place. We are not protectionist. Yet you fetishize post-protectionist America at its height. What is wrong with his brain? Can anyone point me to the developmental issue that caused this person to exist? Free trade is not American, so no free market. Yeah, no, he just, he's, yeah. Yeah. It's fucking, it, do you think it was the fluoride? You think it might be the fluoride worms, too? Oh, Jefferson, you know, he came around after the War of 1812. Good for him. He got there. Alexander Hamilton, who was George Washington's treasurer, and who sits nicely on the $10 bill, he was a protectionist. He supports he his country whether they do right or wrong. You know, wide open cowboy capitalism, free trade is the American way. It's just not true. It's not real history. The second piece of legislation that George Washington signed into law <clears> after <throat> independence was literally a tariff. If you want to hollow out American towns and keep our supply lines dependent on foreign countries who are often hostile towards us, vote for free trade. But be careful. If a viral pandemic breaks out, you might be in hot water, but it's unlikely, right? It's not like they eat notoriously diseased animals like you and I eat apple pie or anything, so you should be fine. But yeah, if you want to uh, put American... Now he just did the, 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 the super racist Chinese people just sit around and eat fucking bats all day like we eat apple pie. Just super casual. Super casual. Nice, nice amounts of the racism. A decent amount. You know, you can't be, you can't be mad at him. He said, he said that he doesn't think the white people are superior earlier. You know, he said that. Thank you, Chris. And families first, vote for protectionism. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its he strongly agrees with shareholders. This. I don't know if you could even call that a, a social responsibility that... I feel as though that's more of like a structural obligation, so I don't really like the premise, so I'll disagree, but... He's gonna disagree?! Wait, only because of the social responsibility? It's important to note that just because you're a businessman, that doesn't mean you're no longer an American. Like, you're still, you have an obligation to your countrymen, so you shouldn't practice unethical business. He said a correct thing, except he has a totally different definition of what unethical means. So it's, it might as well be agree. He says disagree, but it might as well be agree, right? Because when he thinks is unethical is... Shit, I don't even know what that would be. What does he think? What, do you, what does he think a, an unethical business looks like? One that does porn? They eat diseased animals and we don't. Go ahead, John. Eat medium rare chickens and see how well that works for you. Exactly. <laughs> the rich are too highly taxed. True. Everyone's too highly taxed. The rich are a part of everyone. Therefore, this is true. So I strongly agree. Everyone is too highly taxed. What? Didn't you just support a George Washington tariff two minutes ago? The rich basically pay for everything, but the thing is that the things that they're paying for shouldn't be being paid for. We don't need them. Spending should be drastically cut along with taxes. I want to comparatively debilitate the government. Those with the ability to pay should... <laughs> Imagine being a simp for billionaires that don't give a fuck about you. Higher True. standards of medical care. Yes, but that's not because they're wealthy and therefore better than you. It's because the system should, like, 
The system should have mobility to ensure that it functions efficiently. It would be better to have a system where the only thing keeping you from getting good medical care is money instead of a system where the only thing keeping you from getting good medical care is that good medical care doesn't exist anymore. That Wait, what? It's be Money should be what keeps you from getting good medical care? How is that ethical, John? John, you just said it should be ethical. How is that ethical? How is it ethical to look at someone who is poor? And go, ah, I guess you don't get to live. What the fuck? That is no longer accessible without a series of obstacles that are trying to have the same effect that the price system used to have, except they're worse at it and they serve no practical purpose. Governments should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Uh, it depends on what you mean by mislead, but yeah, yeah, you know. Government should penalize businesses. What do you mean depends on what you mean by mislead? Oh, I agree with that. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Historically speaking, the monopolies that were taught to demonize, whether it's Rockefeller, Carnegie, even Bill Gates, they weren't actually monopolies. And it was actually the companies that they were crushing simply by being better than they were. Those companies were lobbying to get the government involved to, like, break up uh, their market share. So I, I disagree with that. <laughs> His, living in his country would be a fucking wasteland. It would be a fucking wasteland. Jeez, what's the next one? The free or the market, the free or the people? Probably agree. I think he'll agree. Free or the market, the free or the people. Generally true. I agree with that. But, you know, obviously we have to have some regulation, right? Like, we don't want people selling harmful products. So, well, but the market would punish them for doing it. Okay. If my daughter eats a candy bar that turns out to cause blindness, I really could not care less if their second quarter looks iffy. I would prefer that she could see. Also, we don't want companies to easily profit off addiction. This is why we regulate tobacco, alcohol. This is why we should regulate pornography. Because if you're a slave to your desires, are you really free? Of course not. But, you know, when it comes to the general allocation of resources, the free market is, of course. If you're a slave to your desires, are you really free? You're a Christian! What? He believes in Jesus! Are you really free? What? <laughs> Come on! You don't even have free will at that point. With an all-knowing uh, person that exists, you cannot have free will. Because all of it all the time, ever, has been known, and you are no longer free to make a decision. It's wild. Yeah, he doesn't have a daughter. It was a hypothetical one. Second to none, so, yes. All right. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be... He's going to strongly agree. and But he's going to say, uh, I think he should, regardless of whether or not she's threatened. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. Strongly agree. No, nothing? You're not going to qualify that? He's like, yeah, fuck it, yeah. Fuck, fuck abortion. All authority should be questioned. Mm, I don't even know what he's All authority saying. should be questioned. Probably. I disagree with this. Oh, fuck! He got, he got it wrong? Oh, he's a Christian. That's because he's a Christian. The authority of God should not be questioned. I recognize the importance of like being skeptical of authority. I myself am very skeptical of authority, but there's also an aspect of trust that I think is important because if you're not willing to demonstrate that at least some of the time, then no real progress can ever be made. And this question asks if all authority should be questioned, which I'm assuming means like any authority at any time. So I would have to say that that is not always the case. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a little Old Testament for you. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If this is meant to mean that the punishment should fit the crime. <laughs> Of course, man. Of fucking course. He's literally just getting it all wrong. It's all wrong. I think we agreed once for the wrong reasons. Ah. <sighs> and then I do agree with that. Uh, taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. I he's gonna agree. I disagree. Oh, he's holy shit. He thinks that theaters and museums are important, but. Same way we should keep all Confederate statues. I disagree. I think that practically speaking, if we're going to talk about wasting taxpayer dollars, the museums and the theaters are not where we should be directing our efforts. Uh, but even on principle, I think that there's great value in preserving certain cultural and historical landmarks or staples. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we shouldn't be wasting our money on on it, but it's good. Weird. Whew. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. Strongly disagree. This is specifically asking if it should be the policy of the school, not necessarily the government. So should a school that you're enrolled in require that you show up? Yeah. 
Yeah, like if their academic model doesn't assume their classroom is a full capacity or even that the capacity will fluctuate, I don't think that they would be able to allocate their- This is about truancy law, which I disagree with because it's a class issue. And of course, he, it goes in the opposite direction resources effectively like if 30 kids are supposed to show up and we plan for that two are missing okay whatever that's a lot different than if anywhere between one and 30 kids are supposed to show up we try to plan for that like it would be very improbable that we could do that efficiently and sustainably like just just go to school doesn't mean it has to be a government school preferably we just do away with government schools but you know it's like you should be in school and, and that school should require your attendance you should go away from government schools and then the problem is with the government school okay with a government school you can have separation of church and state with a private school that's not at all and and the right wing people co continually say like ah the kids they go to the schools and they're being indoctrinated to learn to love the gays and hate jesus and it's like so is indoctrination the opposite way a good thing i mean explain to me what what accepting everybody's immutable nature ex explain to me how that's a bad thing you're immutably black, you're immutably gay, you're immutably trans, you're immutably a woman or a man, whatever. Why is that bad? It includes Christians. I don't I don't know. Spooky bed air, thanks for following. That's that's just my my two cents. All people have their rights, but it's better for us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. The problem with this is that there are virtually infinite ways that you could categorize people. So the logical conclusion of this would be all of us like separated, living in the pods. And I don't like that. So disagree. Good parent. He did it good. That's a good thing. I don't, he, he went with a logical conclusion instead of the ethical one, of course, but okay. I'll take, I'll take a correct answer when I can get it. That's like two. That's two so far. Yep, ruined it with the qualifier, but we'll 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 take we'll take a win when we can get it. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Uh oh. Sometimes have to spank their children. Disagree. I don't think that spanking your children is. I don't think it's the end of the world, but I don't think it's an effective form of punishment. Like, hey, we agree on spanking. We did it. Counter argument is always. Oh well, my parents spanked me, and I turned out just fine. Yeah, no one's saying that that's not possible, but. It's much more effective to actually acknowledge the capacity that children have for rational thought, even at very young ages, and then work from that. Unfortunately. Finally, I just got, I just got the, the, my jellies tingled because we can finally agree on something. Oh, he sh it's not just like, he's not just like half right. He's totally right here. It finally happened, chat. It finally happened. Cobby's in chat. Cobby's in chat for our fucking comrade John saying, don't fucking hit your kids. Finally, it happened. Wowzers. It totally happened. Amazing. Wow. It, physically disciplining children is quite often like a lazy reaction. You're not actually teaching them that what they did was wrong. You're just teaching them that if you find out about them doing that, you're going to hurt them. So instead of them learning uh, that they shouldn't do that thing, they've learned that they should keep things from you. And then they've learned that hurting people is a good way to get what you want. So this is how young minds develop. So it's important to treat them as rational, intelligent young people. 100% correct. So I'm, you should have strongly disagreed. But, you know, whatever. It's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. Agree. Strongly. It's natural for children to keep some secrets Come from their on. parents. I mean, yeah, it's probably natural, but that doesn't mean that it's a good idea for them to do it. Uh, uh, and, the, and the probability of this happening is going to decrease if the child feels as if he or she can trust the parents and also if the parent has done well at keeping the child uninterested in things that would even, you know, be considered bad in the first place. Okay. So what happens when John's kid goes, um, daddy, I think I'm trans. What happens in that scenario? Is John the good parent now? Do you think John's a good parent in that scenario? And is like, oh yeah, don't keep anything from me. I always support you. No, come on. Honestly, I find the whole I got spanked when I was young and I turned out to be fine as a statement is inherently wrong because if you were fine, you didn't think that you needed to defend violence against a child. Probably true. Uh, holy shit. Not only did John choose the right choice, but he didn't have some bullshit semantic reason to justify it. Did we temporarily peer into a good timeline? No. No, because it's bad. So. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Very slightly agree, but only because that's not the hill that I want to die on right now. There are more pressing things that need to be dealt with at the moment. Frankly, I don't really care, but I'm inclined to push back because so many potheads think that marijuana is not only harmless, but actually like beneficial. And some of them even purport it to be like this miracle drug. And it's all very annoying and incorrect. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. Strongly disagree. There's more to school than becoming a cog in the wheel. Now, that being said, of course, schools should certainly teach students. 
There's more to going to school than being a cog in the wheel. But all you are is a cog in the wheel under John's government. You can't get health care without being a cog. You can't have shelter or heat or fucking food without being a cog. It's weird that his brain can split like this and be like, well, it's important for kids to like socialize and, and learn how to be a person in high school. But also, they're only good for labor. Like, what the fuck? I guess... <laughs> oh, man. It's more practical. And water, yeah. With skills, like, that would be epic. But there's more to education and life than just doing a job. Like, school should teach you to think critically. Which, by the way, means that when you hear something, you think of every possible way that it might not be true. And you keep just running trials like that until the idea is either garbage or sound. They never actually, like, teach you that in school. They say, think critically, but they never actually tell you what that means. If school were just to help you get a job, uh, then you wouldn't necessarily need things like that. You could just skate by through just learning how to snap electronics together or something. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Strongly disagree. The most important thing for children... Not fascist about that. That's good. ...children to learn is to accept discipline. Strongly disagree. The most important thing for children to learn is to be moral and rational individuals. We're start... Hey, this part... This part is not that bad. It's not great. It's not great. So far, he's like a, like a C plus, but that's better than I thought he was going to be. There are no savage and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures. Strongly disagree. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. And then he fucked it up. And then he went and fucked it up, chat. He just went and fucked it up. Why? Why? He thinks people are inherently savage? Oh, my fuck. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, D minus. Went for C plus to a D minus real fucking quick. Some cultures suck. And if you disagree, you should throw a dart at a map of the world minus the West, then travel to wherever it sticks, and then write your, your HuffPo op-ed about why all cultures are equal. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society support. He's gonna agree. True. You want fuck. Ugh. Uh, children should learn that they're more than just a cog in the wheel. Be a cog. If you're not a cog, you're fucking trash. But we should also teach kids that they're not just cogs and they're people and they have value. Except they're only cogs. How? How? You pay lip service, and then when it comes down to it, you're like, yeah, but not really. Yeah, but not really. Fuck you. We're not entitled to my labor. You have your own labor. If you choose not to use it, you know, that's your fault. Laziness should not be rewarded by becoming an occupation. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. I just agree. I think that uh, there's merit to thinking about whatever is troubling you. I mean, obviously, at some point, you're going to have to move on, but you need to analyze it, learn from it, and go from there instead of just ignoring it and hoping that it goes away. First-generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. Okay, well, it says never, which I don't think is true, so I'll have to disagree, but I do think that immigration policy should require likelihood of assimilation as a factor. This means a meritocracy. This means learning English. This means supporting our Constitution, because what we've been doing for the last few decades now is basically letting people pour across the border and expecting very little in terms of assimilation, because it's offensive, and there's no such thing as American culture, just other cultures that exist in America. Or at least that's what we've been told. What's American culture, John? Not that he would talk to me again because he's a coward. But what's American culture, John? Name the, name the culture of America that pervades throughout. Let's see. Is there, is there one of those? Do we have that? Because I asked Sargon the same thing. It didn't happen. Hmm. Speaking of Sargon, you guys did earn this with the hype train. There you go. There you go. He's always there. He's always there with us in his trashy goodness. What's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. The question says always, which is definitely not true, and we talked about some of the reasons why this could be earlier, so. No broadcasting institution, however independent, its content, should receive public funding. I disagree. No bro however independent. I think that certain things should be covered by a public outlet, and also this kind of goes <coughs> back to the question of like, okay, is this where we're going to attack spending? On like, what, NPR? What about Social Security? You know? Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Mm, I don't think that's true. Oh, come on, dude! The Patriot Act? Wow. I just don't even... You know, I used to not give a shit about this. And like... 
Now I really fucking care about that. <laughs> you should you should you should care about like not being under the purview of the government constantly. Jesus. A significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all of the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. I mean, I guess. I don't know if I'd call that an advantage because, like, sure, your policy might be able to get through quicker, but I think there's some benefit to <sighs> arguing about the policy and going through the process, trying to make it, like, airtight. So I disagree with that. Getting bad policy through but doing it faster isn't really an advantage, I don't think. Okay. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. No, this is ridiculous. Whether you're guilty is irrelevant to the question of whether your rights can be violated. What? What? He just two, two what? Two seconds ago he disagreed. What? Oh! How? 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 Please, for the oh, please, somebody. Somebody fucking teach me. Teach me how this works. The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. Disagree. True. Justice. The government should be able to execute sovereign citizens. <laughs> okay, buddy. For the victim of the crime, punishment for the perpetrator, deterrence for those considering crimes of similar caliber, even rehabilitation for the perpetrator. I think an argument could be made that your spirit is rehabilitated in your final moments. I hate... Your spirit is rehabilitated in your final moments. There's an argument to be made that y if you're a, a, a mass murdering rapist, that in your final moments, your spirit is cleansed. So death penalty is fine. God, he's a fucking... He's so fucking stupid. He's so stupid. Lethal injection, though. I would bring back the firing squad, literally just because I think it's more dignified. I would much rather go out on my feet T-posing than being strapped down and injected with the forever nap juice like an animal. I think it's disgusting, even for our most vile offenders, frankly. So, it's not that the government has the authority to take a citizen's life and we let them, it's that it's not dignified? <sighs> I've never seen someone virtue signal the death penalty before. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. Yes, that is one of the defining features of conservatism. We believe in hierarchy. I mean, he just went out and said it, so I guess that's fine. I guess, I guess just being honest with it. Okay. He's, <laughs> Jesus. But he's against euthanasia and death with dignity, though. Probably. Probably. Uh, abstract art that doesn't represent anything should not be considered art at all. A absolutely true. Oh, God! We can't even agree on what art is? Oh, my fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> Whatever the artist intended to express, whether or not you consider it quality or good or it speaks to you, it's art. It's not a big deal. Oh, my God. What we consider art is to be... <laughs> Abstract art literally exists to have no purpose. Like, its purpose is that it doesn't have one. That's what it's trying to communicate. That makes it art. What are you talking about? You just, you just advocated for the fact that it is art. Like, of course it can be aesthetically pleasing, but that does not make it art. Abstract art literally exists to say that anything can be art because... It e even if that was the case... You just advocated for it being art. It's all subjective, which is why its popularity coincides with subjectivist culture, and it's also why it's so popular among these educated leftists on the coasts. In criminal... <laughs> educated leftists on the coast. Ah, uh, imagine being educated and having beachfront property. Hmm, <laughs> loser. Justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. True. Punishment is more important than rehabilitation? Why, John? 
I mean, even in even even like coldly analytical takes on this, the coldest, least, well, we're gonna strip ethic, ethics from it, right? Just from a, like a financial perspective, the coldest, most cynical way I can put this is: if you consider criminal justice punishment being more important than rehabilitation, surely you must understand that punishment does not prevent recidivism, which means people coming back to jail or prison and, and committing crimes again that end them up back here, which causes us to have to spend money on them instead of rehabilitating them to make them become a fucking functioning worker and a taxpayer. A cog in the wheel. You just said that you like you, 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 you liked stratification. You like social stratification and hierarchy. Rehabilitation would literally lean into capitalism. I, I don't even. I don't even fucking understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's just wild. That's wild. Because justice for the victim is more important than rehabilitation for the criminal. Justice for the victim. Okay. Also, because deterrence is important, it is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. Again. Yeah. If this is saying that some people simply cannot be rehabilitated. <sighs> Oh, buddy. I agree with that. We know that to be true, actually. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Strongly disagree with that. How are we defining important? And oftentimes, the writer and the artist can also be the business person and the manufacturer, right? So I wouldn't say that they're more important. I think that they're all important in the roles that they play um, in the big picture. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. True. Ah! <laughs> Hey ladies, hey ladies in chat, John's here to scoop your gametes, he's about to, oh man, do we have any ladies with blooming flowers in here, if you know what I mean, John's about to buzz on over to him and de deposit his pollen, okay, oh wow, <laughs> true, <laughs> oh yeah, he's coming in there, Scoop on those gametes, kids. John's coming in there, literally coming in there. He's gonna, he's gonna water your fields. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, make my homes, have my babies. I don't need you to have a 401k. Mothers, we love you. We cherish you. You don't have the hardest job in the world, but you do have the most important job in the world, by far. Without. You like that fuck you moms thing he just did? Hey moms. Hey moms. We love you and cherish you. You don't have the hardest job in the world. You have a good job. It's really important. Fuck you though. You're not, you're not trying that hard. You, you're pretty trash. Look at that. I still, still want to get up in there a little bit. You know. God. Parenting is fucking crazy hard for the record. Without you, nothing else matters. I mean, fathers are not mothers, and fathers are extremely important, which is something that we talk about quite often on this channel. But at the end of the day, no society can survive without mothers raising children. Chesterton had a great way of explaining it. Basically, that feminism has convinced... He literally is negging mommies. Yes. Yes, he is negging the mommies. This is true. 100% true. women that it's oppressive to serve their families but it's actually empowering to serve their bosses this idea that it's empowering to outsource the nurturing of your child to someone else while you go punch numbers into an excel file like come on give me a break a mother's first duty is to her family just as a father's first duty is to his family but the job descriptions are different and pretending that they aren't has made us into a depressed lonely country with no family structure basically begging for the chinese to come conquer us If the person I live with has a vagina and she makes more money than me, I might as well just open up my doors and say, Please sub subjugate me, China. That's pretty much what it is. Did you guys know that if we have strong women, we have strong women that want to pursue careers instead of baby making, we might as well just open the doors and start eating egg rolls instead of fucking sandwiches. We better start using chopsticks instead of forks. We better start using... Mulan, and you start watching Mulan instead of Pocahontas. She's technically American. I don't know. That's the that's the way that John thinks. Hell yeah. 
The very slippery slopes, yeah. <laughs> I like Mulan too. I agree. So. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. I am suspect of their use of unethically and exploiting, so I disagree with that. Why do you have to be suspect of the word unethical and exploitation? We know for a fact that it's not the most ethical thing that they exploit other countries. Come on, bro. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. I generally agree with that. Of course, it depends on which establishment you're talking about, but I do think that it's important to accept that some things just are certain ways, and you know, it's best to try to live your life in accordance with that instead of just fighting against it. A great example uh, would be your gender. Astrology act. Your your gender. I, I assume because he's a he's a, he's a chud. He's like, don't fight it. Just enjoy your your big hairy dong instead of being the beautiful woman that you are. To be fair, you can have both if you want. Ladies with big hairy dongs are valid. And Sarah's into that, so. Yeah, this seems pretty wild. It seems pretty wild. I don't I don't think John really understands that conversation. Because pretty much every person, no every person, not pretty much, every single person that identifies the fact that their gender is incongruent with how people operate around them and how they are viewed are, like, literally leaning in and not fighting it anymore. Like, every trans person, especially binary trans people who have ever talked to me about this, say that, like, yeah, I used to fight, like, Hannah, for instance, I used to fight to maintain... The facade of masculinity. And now it's like not a fight. So there's no struggle. Or at least the struggle is limited. Right? Now it's a struggle against like, you know, the less of like me being who I am or and, and more just like the waiting game of, of being who I want to be. Right? Like like it's not it <laughs> He's just got this totally fucking backwards. Alright. Astrology accurately explains many things. <laughs> He's going to say, is, if he says something about it being woo-woo and he's a religious person, I'm going to be fucking, and of course he's going to say agree here probably. Accurately explains many things. No, and the people that believe this stuff have given me the most headaches per capita of any group of people. You're religious. John, you're religious. You cannot be moral without being religious. True. Okay, hold on one sec. Ready to go. You cannot be moral without being religious. You can be moral by happenstance, but without any grounding, it would have no significance. For example, to be a moral person in the United States, let's go back 50 years because the standards have changed because of the decline in religion. Let's go back 50 years to a place we don't exist in to see if we're being moral. Okay. You would subscribe to Christian morality. You yourself might not be a Christian, but for your morality to make sense, it would have to be grounded in something that would have the authority to do that. Would really? He realizes that 50 years ago was like 1970, right? No, this wouldn't be the case in 1970. What? Which would be God. It's not at all a coincidence that this country's morality has declined alongside its religious affiliation and participation. And most people that think that they're not religious are actually very religious. You know, if you ask them uh, how they think the world works, what they think about existence, what they think about good and evil and how they work in the world. What I found with myself... Okay, let's, let's, let's answer those questions real quick. As a, as a non-religious... That, which would be God. Right, it's not go. at all a coincidence that this country's morality has declined alongside its yeah. religious affiliation and participation. Okay. And most people answer that think that they're not religious are actually very religious. You know, if you ask them uh, how they think the world works... How do I think the world works? That's pretty broad. How does the world work? That's a... Let's just go with planet Earth. I, I don't know. I don't know what the rest of it would mean. Um, it would basically be uh, it's, it's it's a natural process of of, of gravity mostly <laughs> uh, orbiting orbiting a star. 
uh, 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 on its own axis. It has many different natural things that occur, and it's uh, it's fucking cool. Is that is that good enough? I don't really. It's mostly gravity. Like gravity's like a lot of the stuff. I don't really know what he means by how the world works, other than that. But you know, the moon is very important. That's ma- you know magnetic fields and stuff. You know, gravity. And, you know, okay. What they think about existence. 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 You know what existence is? Fucking kind of rare. Kind of rare. The the idea that you are made up of, like, stuff in the universe and you are configured in such a way that you are able to observe the universe of which you are a part. Pretty fucking cool. It's like a crapshoot. Like... There's a there's a billions and billions and billions and billions of of reasons that none of us should exist, and yet uh, enough events occurred to where each and every one of you specifically does exist in the way that you do exist, and it's it's kind of cool to think about that. Like just from a mathematical perspective, the fact that the fact the fact that any of us are really existing at all is actually kind of fucking dope. It's kind of cool, and we waste a lot of it, but you know what I mean, like. Uh, it's, it's, it's not like, it's not like, how do I describe this? It's not made for us. We are made of it. What they think about good and evil. I don't think good and evil exists in both our social constructs. Is that enough? You need any more? In how they work in the world. What I found with myself and with talking to people in similar situations, a lot of people just don't like to be told what to do or... Or what to believe? <laughs> Man, I've been I've been hanging out in the atheist uh, stuff for a long, long time, um, and I gotta be honest, I didn't grow up religious. Um, um, it has nothing to do with not being want, told what to do, right? Because like, like it, it's not about like rules that re- like I, I'm not not religious because there's commandments that I disagree with, right? Because of course this implies uh, John very, very stupidly implies that like of course. It's, it's atheism, just like a lot of people. Just like a lot of It's atheism versus Christian God existing, which is definitely not the case. The argument is definitely between atheism and any supernatural anything. It, ha- it has nothing to do with Christianity. In fact, Christianity is so specific that it's untenable anytime you really argue with it. The, like, the best argument, the Kalam cosmological argument, which isn't even a good argument in my opinion... It's just like the hardest to kind of walk around because it's such a, it's so slippery and and snaky. Um, um, it, it really doesn't it doesn't argue on behalf of of the Christian God at all. It just argues on behalf of like a, an entity, like a prime mover. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really shitty. Like like I, I don't even, I don't even know how you can I don't even know how your brain works this way. I don't even know how your brain works this way. And so they get a bad taste in their mouth from religious people. But I've yet to meet someone in that position who seriously reads theology and walks away unconvinced. And of course, that's anecdotal, but you know. Seriously reads theology and walks away unconvinced. Hi, my name's Jake, and I've been running an atheist Bible study for the better part of a decade. I remain unconvinced. He's talked to me in person. Okay, all right. To be moral means to be in alignment with what is good. And the only being that would have the authority to decide <coughs> that for all of humanity would be their creator, which is God. Anything else is subjective and, and does not work. But you make jokes, so it isn't that serious? I guess so. I guess so. Spent a lot of time with it. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. He's going to say agree, right? Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. This is true not only because it's more efficient. Oh my fucking god. Charity requires a level of locality and reciprocity that social security and government has never tried to match, uh, nor could it. Some people are naturally unlucky. Yeah, you know, I guess that's true. You could be not born in America. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Very true. This gets back to the same thing. Like, people are... How can you use the word indoctrination as a pejorative and also say but indoctrination is good Just keep him away from fucking everything keep him away this is a bad fucking person john doyle is trash and he needs to be kept away from anything important seriously he should not be he should not be <laughs> he should not be influencing fucking anything he wants a fascist theocracy yes 
so afraid of their children being taught the Bible in school, despite that it's literally the most influential book in the history of the world. It provides the foundation for the greatest society in the history of the world. It's like, why are you okay with your children being taught the books of Marx and Freud, but not the books of John or Matthew? Like, they're going to be taught religion in schools regardless, but it'll just be self-worship. Oh, you're perfect. Just how you are. You can be any gender that you'd like. You know, if that's okay with you, good luck. Kids aren't coming to my kid's birthday party. We were going to go bowling, too. So now your kid doesn't get to sign my kid's bowling pin souvenir, nor does he get to enjoy two slices of pepperoni pizza and eight ounces of watered-down Pepsi because you decided to raise a little Marxist. There goes your number one dad mug. I like that he tries to do this. Um, who is that guy? What is his name? That comedian? What? Let's let's look it up. It's right. He's a right wing comedian. Conservative comedians. What's his name? Dennis Miller. There we go. He tries to do this Dennis Miller thing, and it just doesn't work. And I don't know why Dennis Miller has a career, because he's also not funny. It just doesn't, it, it's just, it's just not funny, man. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a bummer. It's kind of a bummer. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. True. A same-sex couple. <laughs> same-sex couple in stable loving could not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Oh, God. In a stable loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Excluded in comparison to who? Children have a right to a mother and a father. The waiting list of married men and women waiting to adopt babies is miles long, even for babies with special needs. And that's not to say that they're less valid. It's just to say that a lot of couples aren't prepared for the extra responsibility. So given that, there are circumstances that would exclude them. So, you know, children should have a mother and a father. And having two mothers or two fathers is literally impossible. So it would be the best scenario for the child to be given to a married man and a married woman who can use their complementary strengths to play their separate roles in raising the child. What do you mean having two mothers and two fathers is literally impossible? Oh, they mean biologically? But it's biologically impossible to have either a mother or a father if they're adopted in that scenario then. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he disagrees. He uh, he does not think that gay couples should be having kids. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. Here we go, boys. Why? I would first like to say that if you are pro-pornography, you would not have fit into the conservative movement during the days of, like, the George Bush administration. Who gives a shit? Frankly, what I assume happened is the internet moved into everyone's pocket, the online pornography industry exploded, and it gives its product away for free. Because as the saying goes, if it's free, then you're the product. So let's think about this. What decides if something should be legal? Well, first of all, if I have a right to it, banning it is out of the question. So do we have a right to pornography? No. No, if you think the First Amendment of the Constitution, which reads that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech, etc. If you think that James Madison wrote that so that you could watch people have sex and do a lot weirder stuff after that, uh, you know, after you desensitize yourself, which you will, you are literally beyond reason. Like the founding fathers probably would have shot you for suggesting that. This what? The founding fathers would... Uh, What what are you what 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 are you talking about? What are you what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Here we go. You want to read something? You want to read something? Advice to a friend on choosing a mistress by Benjamin Franklin. You ready for this shit? Are you ready for this shit? Can I see that? Can I just see? Can I just actually see this whole thing? I have his biography somewhere. I don't know where it's at though. I don't know where it's at. Let's just let's just read this. Let's just read this real quick from Ben Franklin. You know the most popular, the most popular one. Uh. Can I see it? Can I read it? Can I just read this? Oh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Are you ready for this? Ben motherfucking Franklin. Advice to a young man on the choice of a mistress. My dear friend, I know of no medicine fit to diminish a violent natural inclinations you mentioned. If I did, I think you sh I should not communicate it to you. Marriage is the proper remedy. It is the most natural state of man, and therefore the state in which you are most likely to find solid happiness. Your reasons against entering into it at present appear to me not well-founded. The circumstantial advantages you have in the view by p postponing it are not only uncertain, they are in small comparison to that of the thing itself, the being married and settled. It is the man and woman united that make the complete human being. So he's still for this kind of shit. And then, he talk, you know, he basically, he basically hedges like, hey, you know, marriage is nice and it's very good and you should do it. It's good for the economy and everybody. But... If you will not take this counsel and persist in thinking of commerce with the sex inevitable, then I repeat my former advice that in all your amours, <laughs> uh, uh, you should prefer old women to young ones. You call this a paradox and demand my reasons. They are these. One, because as they have more knowledge of the world and their minds are better stored with observations, their conversation is more improving and more lastingly agreeable. 
Two, this is why you should fuck older women uh, when you have an affair rather than younger women. By Ben Franklin. Because when women cease to be handsome, they study to be good. To maintain their influence over men, they study the diminution of beauty and in, uh, by augmentation, augmentation of utility. He's saying they're good in bed. They learn to do a 1,000 services small and great and are the most tender and useful of all friends when you are sick. Thus, they continue am amiable. And hence, there is hardly such a thing to be found as an old woman who is not a good woman. He really likes ladies. I'm just throwing it out there. He just says, like, hey, as they age, ladies, like a fine wine, okay, the outside, the label might look a little wrinkly, okay, but the inside is sweet nectar. Because there is no hazard of children, he says. You can't, you can't, you can just cloom right inside their barren wasteland, and it's just fine, which regularly produced may be attended with much inconvenience. Four, because through more experience, they are more prudent and discreet in conducting an intrigue to prevent suspicion. If you have sex with an older woman, they're less likely to, to talk about it and maintain discreetness because they want that dick. The commerce with them is therefore safer with regard to your reputation. And with regard to theirs, if the affairs should happen to be known, considerate people might rather be inclined to excuse an old woman who would kindly take care of a young man from his manners by her good counsels and prevent his ruining his health and fortune among mercenary prostitutes. Okay. Okay. Number five. Because in every animal that walks upright, human beings, the deficiency of the fluids that fill the muscles appears first in the highest part. The face first grows lank and wrinkled, then the neck, then the breasts and arms, the lower parts, continuing to the last. Okay. I have to read this. This is Ben Benjamin Franklin. Founding Father Benjamin Franklin wrote this about vaginas. The lower parts continuing to... The last as plump as ever, so that covering all above with a basket and regarding only what is below the girdle, it is impossible of two women to know an old from a young one. And as the dark, as and as in the dark all cats are gray, the pleasure of corporal enjoyment with an old woman is at least equal and frequently superior. Every knack being practiced, capable of improvement. Old ladies got the juice. Hell yeah! Ben Franklin. Number six. Having sex with an older woman is better because the sin is less. The debauching of virgin may be her ruin and make her life unhappy. Number seven. Because the compunction is less. The having made a young girl miserable may give you frequent bitter reflections, none of which can attend the making of an old woman happy. Hey. Hey. You're just making an older woman feel good inside okay all right ben motherfucking franklin eight hey! and lastly they are so grateful you can't really read that behind chat they are so grateful that's ben franklin as ben franklin coaching people on how to fuck without getting caught not married Hi. So, John, I think maybe you need to read a little bit more literature. Just a bit. Trash. The Supreme Court has already ruled that obscenity can be regulated. It has to meet three standards. Basically, it has to be explicitly sexual, such as, you know, people having sex on camera. It has to portray that in a patently offensive manner. And it has to lack serious <sighs> literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. Thanks, and the CJ. argument is always here. Well, but what happens if the left gets power and decides that conservatives are obscene with their beliefs and then they censor us? Okay, do you understand that in order to do that, as outlined by the Supreme Court, they would have to prove to an average person that conservative beliefs meet all three prongs for the definition of obscene, which means they would have to prove that conservative beliefs are designed to make people horny. Do you understand how absolutely drained of intelligence that idea is like do you know how stupid that is you don't actually believe that you don't like you just you want to believe that because you think it's cool to say that oh yeah government's always bad no matter yeah uh thomas jefferson was famous for fucking his slave i mean she couldn't consent naturally right as being a slave so yeah you could say fucking but you know uh it was definitely exploitation and her name was sally hemming matter what it makes it really easy for you to be involved in politics because your answer is always just oh, government's bad huh? and you get to feel like you know you really know something yeah you know something that we don't this is why i'm not a libertarian you want to know what did it i noticed that i was consciously trying to rework my beliefs because i thought that oh it'd be cool to be a libertarian yeah government's bad i'm smarter than all the people who think government should exist for things but then i realized libertarianism only like details in 
abstractions. Like the focal point of libertarian philosophy is the non-aggression principle. Do whatever you want, as long as you're not using force against your neighbor or imposing your will on other people. Like that's, that's why they think people should be able to own recreational nukes. Like, okay, what if someone uses one? Well, that would be a violation of the NAP. Okay, well, what if they do it anyway? Well, they wouldn't because that would be a violation of the NAP. And then this goes back and forth eternally until we're all dead. Same thing with pornography. You Same thing with por pornography is like nukes. Pornography is a dick nuke. That's how it works. You fat too much and you're, you're, you vaporize your dong. That's what happens, okay? All right? That's why we need November. Every November, we know fap, and we reset our dick skin, and it's okay. Nukake! You don't have a right to it. We know that. We know that it's one of the biggest causes of divorce in this country. We know that it's prematurely sexualizing children. They're being exposed to it at age 11 on average, which means half of them are younger when they're first exposed to it. We know that prematurely sexualizing children causes an increased likelihood of depression, anxiety, dangerous behavior. Wait, who are we sexualizing children for? What happened? He just started talking about sexualizing children for no reason. What? Behavior, relationship problems. It drains motivation from men. It makes destroy dick December cancels it out though. Yeah, but it's a great one. Makes them depressed. They're all addicted to it. Okay, that's what I've got. And then you want to tell me that none of that matters because, because what? Because be, you don't have a right. To, like it does nothing positive for you. No one's saying you can't masturbate. Like have a heyday, dude. But like, you won't do it without porn because you're addicted to the dopamine. I mean, libertarianism says that this is all okay. It's because it's better than the government doing something. Why? No one cares to answer because all that matters is that the government's always bad. The only way that you're going to get the culture off pornography when it's addicted to it is like to make it go away. <sighs> okay. I would argue... I would argue, okay, that the way that I jack off is freedom of expression, goddammit, okay? You don't know how fucking in-depth I get, all right? I need ambient sounds of the jungle, okay? All right? I need to, uh, I need, I need candles that smell like nature, all right? Sarah has to dress up like a red panda, all right, and growl at me. I have to track her through the wilderness, tracking markings, dung piles. I have to track, I have to, if she's menstruating, I have to track the smell, okay? All right, I have to dip my fingers in dung piles, taste them, and depending on the nuttiness, I, I know which, 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 which crops of trees she's been hanging out in. Track her down. Got to catch her in a net trap, Okay. All right? And this is how I fuck, okay? You cannot tell me that this isn't art. All right? This is how it works. Do it in the corn suit. What do you what do you think? What do you need corn suits for? What do you need corn suits for? Don't kink shame. I fap too much in the womb and that's why I came out without a dick. There you go. I don't think that's funny. I'm glad that you think it was funny, but it was mm, sort of like a C minus. It's okay, Defeater. I love you. So that's what should be done. And if you think otherwise, even though it's inarguably a terrible thing for society, I would imagine that it's because you're selfish. Because you're trying to feed your own addiction at the expense of children and families. And I hate that. And I hate that. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Are you saying expense of families and children? Are you saying that people, f people like, look at porn so much that they don't have seed left for their wives' wombs? Is that what it is? Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of seed. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shooting blanks. So what goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. I mean, it depends on what's going on. Like, if there's abuse going on, then it it's consent. It said consent. It's not abuse if you consent to it, John. Hate him. He's so stupid. Probably is. So I don't know if I'd say it's no business, but uh, it's definitely not the role of the state to try to catch. It says consent. Catch you cheating on your wife or something like that. No one can feel naturally homosexual. I disagree with that. This doesn't negate the environmental factors that can influence the manifestation of it. Scientists have basically failed at establishing a gay gene, but there are things like prenatal hormone exposure that play a role. But ultimately, regardless of the cause of homosexuality, it still feels natural to the person, even if its manifestation wasn't. So, these days, openness about sex has gone too far. Hmm. I wonder what I will say. All right. Let's see where I ended up. Oh my God. Openness about sex has gone too far. By the way, mm, you you should um, when you have children, they should be able to tell you anything except like anything about their sex, like any any sexual sexual anything, just anything that's sexual. You can't talk about that. 
Okay, buddy. Hokey dokey. Where do you think he's going to be? Where do you think he's going to be, chat? Where do you think he's going to be? He's going to be an authoritarian right winger. Let's just no. toss this Can I get out a drum there. roll? Drum roll. Yeah, okay, that's about what I expected. It's funny because everyone... Oh, look, an authoritarian right winger. Where's your boy? Boop! Here's where I'm at. I'm way down here. I'm way down here. And your boy is authoritarian right. Wow. Wow. And I bet if you gave him more questions, he would move in this direction. In this direction. <laughs> Negative five. One, two, three, four, five. Negative four. One, two, three, four. You need to do... We can get you... We can get you down here in Correctville, okay? You're only correct if you're right in this area, okay? Alright, that's it. It's the whole thing. <laughs> Just crazy. One that hates me, they always, oh, he's a Nazi, he's far right, or he's a fascist, but as you can see, I'm not that far right. I'm not a libertarian because I'm a conservative, but I'm still nowhere close to being a Nazi. Pretty sure Hitler's right here. Isn't Hitler right there? Hold on, he, he went past it. Let's go. I wonder what I will say. All right, let's see where I ended up. Can I get a drum roll? Yeah. Oh, Hitler's straight up. Okay. Okay. So he's, 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 he's like right here. He's like right here. Okay. He's further to the right than Hitler. Okay. But Hitler was more authoritarian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's about what I'm a Nazi on a graph with 10 points. Oh well, this was fun. It was very epic. Uh, Joe Biden actually just attacked you in a tweet. I don't know if you have. So I'm saying, so it puts Hitler, it puts Hitler near, near the uh, uh, near near centrist authoritarian on there, which means that it's probably not very correct, right? It's he's, he's definitely more to the right than that is, right? However, John still got further to the right of Hitler. He's just not quite as authoritarian. <laughs>